Consulting, a technology, ethics, and sustainability consulting firm based in Madrid. And you are the board of directors of Endesa. And I'm Carolina Villegas, I'm a PhD candidate, and I'm a, um, the ethics consultant at Test Consulting. And now I'm gonna give a voice to my peers, um, Jesus, Olga, and Ophelia, just to say their names. Okay, thank you. My name is Jesus. I'm uh, from Colombia. I'm a PhD candidate in renewable resources in Comillas uh, University. Um, uh, we are going to show you um, a study case about, about, about teleworking. Uh, the title is uh, Sustainable Telework uh, Strategy for Rendeza. Uh, Carolina, uh, next. Yes, I just want to Olga and Ophelia okay, to say their you. name and, okay, okay. and their role. Hello everyone, I'm Olga, I'm from Barcelona, but I'm living in Madrid. I'm part-time PhD student at Comillas University. Uh, my investigation is focused on the intentionality as a key element of the impact investment. And I'm also an uh, impact investing uh, sustainability consultant. I'm going to explain you the financial analysis of the case. Thank you. And Ophelia? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ophelia Tejerina. I'm a PhD candidate at Universidad Pontificia de Comillas. And I am from Madrid. And I am a lawyer, uh, actually, in my, in my work. Thank you. And we're here in the suburb of director. We have this case of a sustainable telework strategy um, proposition for you. Um, first, we are going to give you an overview of the situation. Then we are going to present you the financial analysis that we make of your case, then the legal issues. And after that, the ethical consideration we take into account to make our propositions. And then finally, our recommendations for you and your strategy of telework. As is known, a uh, consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic, a million of workers in the world have been working at, at home. Um, next. Okay, what, what does teleworking mean? Te teleworking means uh, a work in, at home or in a place different uh, by, this, uh, by the one designed uh, by the company. In Spain, teleworking increased from 8.3% in, in, in 2019 to 14.5% uh, in 2020. Uh, next. Uh, our, our study case, case is based on Endesa. Endesa is a multinational electric utility company uh, that produce energy based on nuclear, fossil, hydroelectric, and renewable resources power plant. And at this point, it's very interesting to mention some features uh, about, the, about the building. Um, because it's interesting, because uh, the, the, the building has, uh, has a lot of uh, interesting features in, uh, among them. Um, 2,500 people uh, working there. Uh, it has uh, uh, a thousand car parkings, and by the way, it earned the badge for sustainable building in Madrid in 2016. Next, another interesting point uh, about teleworking is the is the associated with the law in Madrid. Um, in this case, um, I am focusing the in the first one and, and in the fifth one. The first one is. Uh, associated with what, when is considered teleworking in Madrid, in, in Spain in general, is, is considered teleworking when the, the time on, the, of time on at home is at least uh, 30% of working hours. Uh, th this is the, the first interesting point. And the, and the next one is, uh, the, the company is responsible for providing and maintaining all means, equipment, and tools uh, to, to all teleworkers. Uh, th these are the, the most important things uh, at, at 
this slide. Next. Um, with, with these points in, in mind, uh, we, we need to, um, to design a, a strategy to teleworking uh, that, that is sustainable and, and flexible. Uh, we have three points of discussion. Uh, the first one is to design uh, an, an, optimal, an optimal policy uh, to, for teleworking, for teleworking uh, taking into account the, the law and different, different restrictions. Uh, this defines an interesting uh, optimization problem. Um, next one. The, the next point of discussion is to minimize the gender gaps. Uh, at this point, the teleworking is preferred by the woman uh, or, or mother, and it's, it's very important, the, the strategy a minimize the gender gaps. And uh, finally, finally, the, another interesting or important point is the reduction of emission of, uh, of gases. Um, th this, is, this, is due, um, uh, this is because uh, the, the teleworking minimizes the transportation between harm uh, to, to, the, um, uh, to the company or uh, in, in summary, is reduction of transportation. The, these are the, the three points uh, to, to be needed to uh, design a, an interesting policy for teleworking. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, as I said uh, before, I'm going to explain the financial analysis. First of all, we would like to introduce you that our financial analysis uh, takes into account non-financial aspect. We strongly believe that uh, non-financial aspects um, add or devaluate the financial statements in the company if your impact is positive or negative for the social and environmental development. We have also uh, decided to do that do the growing interest of investors in investing in socially and environmentally um, responsible companies. So for that reason, uh, before showing you the investors financial statement, we would like to, to explain to you briefly the methodology developed by HBS, uh, Harvard Business School, to calculate the net positive impact. In this case, we focus on the employment dimension uh, to our ethic case, the teleworking in, in Endesa. So the, the methodology called impact weighted financial accounts, it uh, takes into account three uh, dimension of uh, employee impact. Uh, first one is wage quality, second is opportunity, and the third is health and well-being. Our proposal here is to add another impact dimension telecommuting or teleworking. And that is because uh, it has to improve that uh, teleworking increased satisfaction, uh, flexibility, create a greater social impact and increase the productivity. And all of that uh, produce a better return on capital for the company. Next, please, Caroline. So now uh, we are going to explain you the financial statement of Endesa. Uh, Endesa for its sector, uh, electricity, uh, has not suffered a huge damage in, in due to the COVID-19 in its revenues and, and EBITDA. As you can see in 2020, its revenues were uh, 17 billion more or less, and the EBITDA was uh, 3 billion, quite similar than the last year. Next, please. Neither in the workforce, we can see a huge difference between uh, 2019 and 2020. Uh, the, employment, the employment rate only fell uh, by 3.4%. Next, please. Okay, now uh, in terms of its strategic plan, uh, Endesa adopt a smart working target that it has been surpassed uh, in 256% uh, this year. Uh, what 
is a smart working for Endesa. Next, please. Smart working for Endesa um, implies a cultural shift that seeks um, to increase the productivity and increase the productivity uh, in the teams. And considers four elements, uh, flexibility, mobility, and open, open space and paper-free and cable-free office model. We are going to focus on two of them, flexibility and mobility. So at that point, uh, our question is, is still working good for the company in the financial terms? Next. Well, our answer is the band. Um, we, th uh, we think, we strongly believe that it's for everyone if they, they are done in a responsible and ethical manner and with the appropriate internal and external regulation. This is, a, the reason is because it increases the productivity and if it is done properly and with the control mechanism that my colleagues are going to explain now, it improves the work-life balance, it reduces the stress of the employees, and all of this uh, is reflected in, in increasing the value of the product and the improvement in commercialization. Therefore, um, at the financial level, um, it is necessary to take into account two points. First one, uh, it's possible to improve the, the results, the financial results to the to increase the productivity, but it's also true that it's a potential loss uh, to the headquarters maintains in the case of Endesa. So we recommend to, to optimize this cost. Endesa must make a, um, a space a utilization plan. Next, please. We can hear you, Ophelia. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Alina. Uh, let's talk about the legal issues. Um, please, next. Um, first of all, we should start uh, talking about the principal rules that are now uh, regulating the telework. In Spain, we, we should follow the Royal Decree Law 20, 28, 22, 2020 of teleworking. This is the more recent rule here. But uh, we should follow also the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, it's a European rule, and the Directive on Security of Network and information system. Uh, we, we have in Spain in the internal laws, uh, the, the special rules about the, that uh, directive. And um, all the companies, uh, the companies uh, as Endesa should follow that uh, terms. First of all, we should definite uh, telework. Telework by the law is uh, a type of remote work carried out through the exclusive or prevalent use of computer, telematics, and telecommunication systems. It must, it must be considered when a minimum of 30% of the working day is rendered under this modality. Please, next. What's, uh, what are the aims and objectives? Okay, uh, the idea of the rule is to protect the rights of the employers and employees alike in the context of teleworking, to acknowledge the, the new reality with regards to teleworking, uh, to sign a responsible, responsible and voluntary agreement under the legal basis, of course, between the company and employees, and to achieve the most efficient and secure system, respecting, of course, again, the right to disconnect outside the work, uh, the work hours, and to enjoy flexibility where risk. Next, please. Um, the system could be based uh, in a voluntary commitment. It's very important uh, because the idea of telework is voluntary for the employee and the company, for both. Um, it will require, require the signing of a remote work agreement and it should be uh, redacted very clear and detailed about the responsibilities of each part, the responsibilities and, uh, of course, the, the rights. And it cannot be imposed by a substantial modification in working conditions. One special point to take in, into account is that no be sorry, no may be cause for dismissal, the refusal of the employee to sign the commitment, 
to exercise his rights uh, or her right to reversibility, uh, reversi reversibility uh, to one on site work or the difficulties for the proper development of the activity related exclusively to the change of the on-site remote provision. Next, please. Um, for the company, uh, compliance is very important. Of course, bases are on the law, but not only. And here is uh, the uh, ethic issues uh, where uh, are stronger. Self-regulation could be the perfect match in this way for Endesa involving the uh, employee representatives. These policies should be very clearly redacted and well informed, especially if they set up uh, new methods to control the activity. On the other hand, it's essential to establish procedures to train the digital skills, maintain it updated, and procedures to be followed in case of technical difficulties. Of course, the company is responsible for the implementation of adequate, adequate tools, software and hardware. And um, it is highly recommended to do an inventory of media equipment and tools for the development of the work with a maximum period for day renewal. Finally, Endesa must provide adequate training in cybersecurity to the staff in all categories. Data protection and information security are the most important points, especially because Endesa is an operator of essential services. The company should implement the most efficient measures to further improve the resilience and incident response capacities. Next, please. For employee, consequently, uh, the employee can demand uh, the protection to his or her rights in the same way that the on-site work privacy, payment, stability, training and career de development, personal and family life coordination, including, of course, rights related to physical and mental health, mental health. And at this point, I would like to remark the importance of respecting the right to digital disconnection. Once more, however, not forget that the employee must follow the due diligence principles uh, they has. Uh, so, uh, they have um, obligations, of course, and take care of telework tools, take care of information, and take care of all these updating um, digital skills. Finally, let me conclude by saying about privacy, that Endesa must always take into account of the dignity of the worker and not install programs or applications on devices owned by uh, the worker. Thank you. Well, now let's talk about cons ethical considerations. And here we believe that all of you members of the board of Endesa should take into account these essential ethical aspects when developing your telework strategy. Where first come and good. Here we think that you and enterprises when developing your telework strategy should always think in the common good, understood as a good proper tool and attainable only by community you need individually shared by its members. At Inesa, you should think in all of your stakeholders when developing your strategy, like governments, shareholders, suppliers, especially employers and their families, communities, society as a whole, and environment. Well, about studies. To talk about studies is that, is that the state should be in line with the understanding of the enterprise studies. Inesa should work on a strategy to avoid harm and to promote the well being of all your employees. Harm should be avoided in the physical and psychological aspects. We now know how human body can be affected by sedentarism and for maintaining certain postures inappropriate for the human body. Also, we now know too how loneliness and lack of social relationships can affect human development and psychological well being. What about rights? This strategy should also be developing, taking into account all employees' rights. For instance, to privacy, as just Ophelia said, of their data, to freedom or choice to telework or not, and to a free time. During the pandemic times in Spain, many employees complained that working hours were extended. Employers assumed that if we all were at home with an internet connection, necessarily we will always be available to answer emails, calls, or requests. And last about justice. All of you members of the board or Endesa must ensure that your telecommunity strategy is fair to all of your employees and does not unfairly discriminate. For instance, based on socioeconomic status, 
gender, or certain circumstances as having dependence. As a socioeconomic status, you should ask yourselves, do all my employees have the same economic possibility to telework? And then you must ensure too that your strategy is first in terms of gender or parenthood. For example, you should, you should ask yourself, it is better or worse for a father or mother to telework? Each case will be different. There are parents who prefer to telework to have a suitable place without noise, looking for hours without distraction. But for others, telework may, may, be, may not be a possibility. Think when home when is mandatory and there is no other option to take care of your child. Above all, the company response must avoid injustice, unfairness, and tend toward egalitarianism. It will be unfair of, if telework, for example, is taken as something negative when the time of promotions or bonus arrives. Where above all, our main concern is that Endesa should act with care, where this means that the telework strategy of the enterprise should take into account or open or be open to the possibility to take into account each employee's circumstance, context, and vulnerability. Well, now we're going to talk about our, rec our recommendations. And here we ask, what should be a sustainable tele telework strategy for Endesa, for you? And we propose a flexible one, one that takes care as a priority and their justice and responsibility of all your stakeholders. Let's talk more about this. As said, as a consequence of the COVID-19 crisis, millions of workers across Europe and beyond have been required to stay home and work from there. The immediate need for teleworking that companies as you and DESA have, have faced in the last year has meant that enterprise faced a great test for which they were not prepared in most cases. Getting out of the telework step is a challenge for the company efficiencies and economics benefits we know. With all of this, we want you to think again. What should be a sustainable telework strategy for us? We intend to show you that your decisions always carry ethical implications, even in the case of telework. When a company decides on a telework strategy, even if it does so without reflection, that decision has a specific ethical implications. And again, what does we propose to you? A sustainable and flexible telework strategy, and what does that imply? It implies to first, avoid a negative impact of the most marginalized stakeholders, just like gender impact and greenhouse gases impacts on our planet. At plus, and this is telework strategy was followed the Spanish legislation while favoring a positive impact of the company with the reduction of infrastructure better use of job places and less absenteeism. The best thing will be to bet on a hybrid and flexible modality. 13% of the working days will be teleworking, but you must always take into account the particularities of each employee. The legal aspects to take into account for a sustainable management of telework, just as Ophelia told you, are self-regulation, training, and transparency. Your telework strategy should keep working on his map of its map of a stakeholder and keep always thinking who can be affected by the implementation of it. They should avoid harm, physical and psychological, provide the necessary equipment to avoid physical pain or any kind of physical harm, and to promote social relationship with team building activities or the same kind of events. That will be to work actively to avoid the psychological damage that telework could bring to your employers. Think of burnout, like psychological help or constant satisfaction service maybe will serve. Even though this plan should be flexible, things must be settled, like free of work hours or central limits in line with employee or employee's necessities to respect the rights of every employee. Also, this plan must ensure fairness and equal treatment of all employees, as we said, regardless of circumstances that involve injustice and discrimination treatment. We can talk about financial fairness, Take into account the cost for telework for employees and the reduction of cost for the enterprise. And also fairness should come in the way of establishing KPIs to promote fairness so telework should not affect promotions or bonus. All this to say again that context, circumstances and vulnerability of each employee are the key to a sustainable telework strategy for you at Endesa and for every ethical com company. Thank you all for your attention and time, and we will be grateful to receive your questions, suggestions, and comments. Okay. Carolina, can you close the PowerPoint so we can? Great. 
so we can see everybody. I yes. know what happened to the rest of, there we go. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, so I believe the judges are going to have questions for you on the presentation. Um, uh, Julie, do you want to lead off? Sure. Uh, thank you very much once again for addressing the board and our concerns for our employee population, uh, both, both current and prospective. I was wondering if you had costed out, and I guess maybe this is really on the financial side for Olga. Uh, I wonder if you've costed out the uh, the materials for the people who want to work at home. And I'm assuming that's gonna be balanced against the shrinking of the physical workspace. And, and have, you, have you thought about that? Thank you for your question, Julie. Um, we have not taken this into account concretely, but the law assumes uh, that if the, the employee works more than 30% at home, the, the company should pay all the uh, additional cost in the at home. <coughs> Okay, so do you have a, a cost for your recommendation, like a, a total cost or not, not yet? Not yet. Okay. Ruth, we'll have somebody else ask the next question. Sure, Mary, do you have any questions? Yeah, hoping you can hear me here. Um, yes. Good afternoon, everybody. For the purpose of this question, I am the um, head of ethics and the head of uh, Recursos Humanos, human resources in Endesa. Thank you for presenting to the board today. Um, could you just um, help me please with a little bit of gap analysis based on your research between the new suggestions that you presented to the board and what we have already within Endesa in terms of an ethical culture and uh, teleworking practices. Thank you. Sorry that I did not understand the concrete question. It's just that you want me to think in a gap that you have right now in your strategy. Yeah, Carolina, yeah, what he's asking do, you like is, you give... go ahead. Go ahead, Mari. Based on, based on your, you've obviously done some very detailed preparation for this project that you've presented. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Very flattering you. you've picked Endesa. And just because uh, we have um, worked a lot in Endesa on ethics, um, and a lot of that's publicly available on the internet, um, and we have had an initiative in the past on teleworking, I'd like you to just clarify for me what you think the differences are in your suggestion. Yes. Okay, let me think. I, I just think that uh, maybe you are missing to take uh, into account the unfair um, consequences that your uh, current strategy have. Not because you're doing something uh, to that, but because you're missing some points. I don't know if this answers your question, but what I say is that I don't see that you have just established your KPIs and and to promote fairness and how and and to take into account how telework can affect and these strategies that were already established in preview the COVID nineteen crisis and I think fairness is pretty important here because many people who have dependents and are changing their way of work and they are taking more hours to telework. And, and things must be settled, as we said, and how this is going to affect um, every employer. I mean, if I do and if I don't take telework, does that affect me in my bonus? That's, those are kind of questions that we want you to ask yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Carolina, what are the hours, does the government provide child care subsidies. So I'm going to ask you a couple of things. Let me put them together so you can answer them as a package. Does the government subsidize child care? Does Inessa subsidize, Indessa subsidize child care? Um, and what are the hours of elementary school 
in in Madrid? Yes. Well, first of all, the hours of and thank you for us for your question. The hours are from nine to three p.m. of the of the daycare, and in this we have and you, I mean, you have uh, daycare facilities. Uh, a daycare for your employees, but there are not so many places for all your all all the kids uh, that the employees have. That's an issue, and also um, as a government, uh, the government has pretty uh, low a pretty low number of daycares, uh, but we provide there um, some tickets for you. Daycare tickets is the name, and where you like this maybe. Um, Olga couldn't explain it more, but the thing is that we, uh, you give to your uh, employees some tickets, daycare tickets, where you don't need to pay uh, taxes for that amount. Am I correct? Am I correct? But the tickets, but the tickets yeah. yeah, is that, the is that yeah, the right? I mean, you don't need, you don't to, need pay to pay taxes for that, for that, for that, for that uh, price. Uh, price let me just ask, My, Michael, can you check on the technology here and why we are having that bit of interference? Hopefully it'll go away. So it, would it be a reasonable part of this proposal for Indesa to invest in additional daycare facilities post COVID? Obviously during the pandemic, you may not want children together, especially young children who um, can't keep their masks on. But it, what did you do a cost benefit analysis of the potential for Indesa funding, subsidizing, or operating daycare centers and after-school programs as opposed to teleworking? Yes, um, uh, we haven't uh, thought of that, but that will be a great thing to add to our uh, proposal of a start a year for telework, of course. Because, um, but parenting is not just, uh, um, I mean, there are other important parts of telework that we want to to take into account. Some of ours are parents, and we think that we know that this is important. But some, uh, most of our are not, and and we know that uh, telework can uh, affect uh, people who are not um, who have no child, doesn't have child, and and that's why we want to attain this uh, essential part of telework. But it's not the it's not our case right now. I mean, it's an important part. But talk, um, oh, I'm sorry. Talk to me about the quote unquote right to disconnect. I, I think that may be much more of a European concept than an American concept. Um, but where is that quote unquote right? Is it provided statutorily in the Spanish Constitution or by other laws? So I think I'm going to pose that. Um, to Olivia, who is uh, your in-house uh, Ophelia, Ophelia yes. who is our in-house counsel. Yeah, uh, we have a, the, the most important right to protect is the dignity. And after that, we can talk about health because it's mental and physical health, health as, as I said. So uh, it's included uh, in the constitution, the right to disconnect. But now in this moment in Spain, uh, um, the government are working in a, a universal declaration about digital rights, and they are trying to um, to include the, the develop of these rights uh, um, um, with uh, with more details. But now we have it in the constitution, and we have the new rule about teleworking, and it's uh, it's include the digital uh, disconnection is necessary. It's because the extra time working, it should be paid. So sometimes uh, the company doesn't uh, take into account that right. So it's necessary to insist on it and put it clearly on, uh, on the law. When you reference the cost of working from home, obviously the technology, et cetera, and reimbursement, were you including a, a prorated section of uh, someone's rent? or the cost of maintaining their home in that? Or was it just the peripherals, the telephone, the internet, et cetera? Hello? It's only the telephone, internet, uh, maybe uh, electricity. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Rebecca, do you have any questions? I do, Ruth, thank you so much. Great. Um, Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, of course, at Indesa, we wanna make sure that we continue to attract great employees and have a great teleworking um, policy. My question is about any minimum or maximum recommendations as far as numbers of employees on site um, or number of days. Um, I know that, I believe it was Olga who said uh, that the ideal would be 30% of days teleworking and I, I presume 70% in the office. It, but it seems like you want to give uh, our employees or you recommend our employees have full choice. Do you recommend that any employee could do whatever they want or a minimum number of days in the office? What do you think? Oh, like you want to answer this? Yeah. I, first of all, it's important that Endesa uh, have a huge um, headquarters here in Madrid with 2,000 uh, employees here, but also uh, has a lot of uh, workers in a little office uh, in all of Spain and Portugal. So it's quite different the policy for the people that work for the headquarters and they work uh, because they can uh, combine uh, teleworking with uh, working present, but uh, there are some employees that can um, apply the telework for for instance uh, people that works in the uh, carbon plants or similar mm -hmm. yes i understand and I agree of course there are some employees who won't be able to do that because of their mm -hmm. role but for any employees who can telework do you recommend that we allow them to do whatever works best for them you know 100 percent at home or 100 percent in the office before covid a uh, as you know, as in this award, uh, in this uh, let um, uh, uh, to the employees uh, to decide if they want to uh, telework one or two days per week. Um, due the COVID pandemic, all the teleworking was implemented for all the employees that can uh, be able to, to do this work at home. But uh, our proposal is uh, that 30% uh, because of the uh, cost that uh, has to assume in this uh, to, to the telework for the employees. Thank you. So it sounds like your proposal is that all employees who yeah. can work um uh, telework 30 percent okay yeah um and and i i yeah my concern was if some people work from home entirely that we lose that in-office culture and and so i think it is um i like that recommendation um my other question is uh, my last question about this is with you know uh, unknown ending to the covid pandemic you know when we can come back to the office and maybe there still is a risk of covid do you recommend any maximum um, number of people in the office um, so that we can have spacing and things like that? So, you know, always having some people teleworking? Well, uh, yes, we're thinking of that. And also, um, we know you have a COVID-free strategy also. And the, uh, the other solution, I mean, the solution to the COVID-free and the spaces and the social distances is teleworking. That's is why we are also um, working on this presentation for you. Okay, thank you. Do you have a sense, Carolina, of how much cost saving we could achieve in terms of needing fewer square meters of, of, um, of office space? Has that been calculated? Not yet, sorry, but we are okay. going to do it for you. And what, let me ask you a, a correlated question, which is if there were such a saving, would, should we, as the board, apply those funds not to surplus profits, but toward um, enriching the lives of the employees or building child care centers or repurposing space as child care or respite care, possibly for an elderly parent? Can, yes. can I get your thoughts on that? Yes, we absolutely recommend you, that you do that. And also for the other activities that we propose to, to avoid harm and physical and psychological, that will be the perfect way to do it. And, and also we here propose transparency for you 
to to make it clear to all your employees how you are managing this that will be the better way to do it thank you tim do you have any questions for the for um for the group uh i do um so i i wonder for uh hey zeus uh you helped us understand um, uh, the issues that are, are a part of this. Is there anyone else uh, that you have encountered at Indessa, you know, any unions uh, or uh, other groups of employees who have an opinion on this topic? Um, okay, uh, I, I know uh, a person in, in Endesa uh, about, and I asked ask him for, for this uh, strategy, and, and he thinks that a uh, 30% of teleworking is, is good because uh, Endesa has um, a, a comfortable building in, in Madrid, and, and he thinks that uh, he he works in in that building is better, but he he works at home is is better too, and uh, he prefers um, uh, working um, uh, in in a balance or combining home and and um, and the building company. Uh, I I only know um, um, one person. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm good, Ruth. You're good. Does anybody else have additional questions? <clears throat> I had one more question um, just to be um, devil's advocate here because I'm sure that the team has prepared for some resistance to this concept at board level. So I'm the dinosaur DPO and head of security. Um, I'm very uncomfortable with um, allowing this level of trust in our employees, uh, because frankly, I don't trust people. And um, I'm already quite annoyed about the new Spanish law on digital disconnection, which suggests that after 5 p.m., after a long lunch and a siesta, I am not allowed to send any emails to any of my staff because that would be outside their normal working hours. Um, so this makes me very uncomfortable. I wanted to ask if you'd consider considered um, any alternatives um, such as providing subsidies um, to domestic staff um, so that the parents can pay somebody else to look after their children and then they can stay in the office and do the work at the place of work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what if I understand clearly, sorry, because of the, of the noise, but I just wanted to tell you, security person in charge, that our proposal, please remember, is a sustainable one. And this implies that it causes the little or no damage to all your employees, and therefore is able to continue for a long time. So if you want Andesa to be a successful company and you and there, that implies that your employers, that, you, that your employees are are good that they feel good and that you respect them. So I think you should give a chance to our proposition. Okay, you've convinced me, Carolina. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Carolina, I believe we've lost Ophelia. Am I correct on that? Or is it just my screen? You lost what? I'm oh, sorry. I didn't Ophelia, know Ophelia, you're you're you um to go to school to yes. Yeah, I can in see her we chat. Uh, she mentioned in her chat that she had to go. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe she have a problem. Oh, I just not. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, she had to, to go teach. That. Do we have any more questions, or can we move on to feedback? No further questions. Okay, we are adjourned and off the record, as we say in court. Um, I thought, and that's why I asked about Ophelia, because I believe she was the member of the team who mentioned the dignity right. And I thought that was a fascinating concept and certainly one that I hope you will explore 
specifically in the short form presentations for tomorrow, both in the okay. uh, 10 minute and the uh, and the even more abbreviated one. Um, and because it was a very good balance between the dignity right and what Murray just mentioned, which was very profound, which is trust. Do okay. you know what is the degree of trust? What do we know about our employee population? Do they need to earn our trust? Or is that trust implicit in the statute? So again, unfortunately, our, our legal consultant member of the team is not, is not here to, um, to hear that, but I thought that was a very um, interesting concept. I, I have to tell you also that I am always in awe, despite the fact that I studied French for many, many years, when I um, listen to people performing at this level in a language which is not their own. And I think you are um, formidable about that. Um, and it's, it's really commendable. I think we as Americans, um, you know, do not engage in foreign languages to the degree that we should as global, as global citizens. Um, I think you were very strong on the legal issues. Um, and my only concern was I didn't think the financial had been laid out in, in enough detail, frankly, although we only do have less than a half hour for, for this and it will not be a component in, uh, in the um, ensuing um, elements of the, of the competition. I will tell you for future years, um, oh, we're getting something from Julie who actually does speak Spanish, bravo. Um, and, and that is that the slides were very, very good and it may be a limitation of our internet-based evaluation as opposed to when we're live and in person on a very large screen, it was difficult to read the slides. Um, you know, and I took out my reading glasses and was basically coming right up against the screen to try to read them. So for the future, um, you may wanna think about that in a run through. What does it look like in this format? Do we need to break the slides down into more, more pages? Um, you know, for the individual sections, because it was honestly very difficult to read. In person, we typically would have a paper copy in front of us as the judges as well. Um, so I want to turn it over to Murray. What were your thoughts, Murray? Um, so thank you very much. Well, well done, team. Um, fully appreciate this is your, your second language, um, as, as commented by Ruth. Um, I, I think you covered some very good ground and some very important points. Maybe for me, you covered too much ground. I do believe less is more. Um, you don't know how long you're going to have the attention of the board. Um, we noticed even the um, consulting team, we lost one of the members midway through. So if you're losing your own team members, you might lose some of the board. So bear that in mind. Um, get your mess maybe less messages more powerfully more clearly communicated. The slides had lots of points on them. I would have gone with 30% of the volume personally. The bit that um, was, was for me uh, maybe constructive, hopefully useful, um, is that for me it was too generic. I was hearing lots about philosophical concepts of um, teleworking. Uh, it was far too generic. Um, I heard very little about um, Endesa, and we were the fictional board of Endesa for the last 20 minutes. So I wasn't hearing specifics about my company, and I was missing that. I was hearing a kind of general teleworking makes sense, it brings benefits for health, um, for well being. It was a little bit airy fairy um, in the sense of lacking um, specific takeaways, action points recommendations from you to me as a board member um, so I would focus in more on the specifics of this company and even consider a specific example of a an employee um, a team a family who will benefit from um, the proposals that you're bringing thank you thank you Julie Excellent. So thank you. Thank you again. And we've been each in serio. <laughs> I loved all your citations to source material. Uh, it gave the presentation impact to know where you had gained your statistics from. 
Um, I think you worked well as a team in terms of the division of labor and our ability to understand who to ask what question to. And I also appreciated Carolina, the fact that you were a catch-all, right? Anything that didn't have a place that, that you, you took the lead on or, or referenced one of your colleagues. I would like to echo the sentiments addressed by Ruth and Marie around, uh, personally, my attention was divided. I didn't know whether to read the slide or listen to what you were saying. And in sometimes they matched, right? And in sometimes they differed. So up front, uh, there was a lot on the slides and Jesus, I didn't listen to you as much, um, but you were saying different things and now I, I regret that decision. I also heard you refer, and this is just a very small knit, a very small item, to items one and five, bullets one and five, but the bullets weren't numbered. Mm. And if you were gonna highlight the two most important things on the slide for my attention, they should be the two top things, even if they don't make sense in a sequential order, or at least highlight them in, in something or number them so that I could follow along with you a little better. Um, in terms of the uh, the right to disconnect, fascinating, and I'm so glad Ruth asked that question, because that is different in terms of the laws in other places. And I think one of the pickups you can make moving forward is to highlight that the laws and regulations are actually outpacing the policies and current strategy of the company, and that for you to remain competitive and to attract and retain talent moving forward, you're going to want to be a workplace of choice for your future employees. Employees who are gonna want the ability to telework or work in the office. And those companies with the most progressive policies in that manner, given generational differences, um, will attract uh, the highest quality talent which is what I think uh, a company wants. So I, I appreciate, um, I appreciate uh, all that you presented and would add one final comment. And that is to put your question presented like you did in your one page in a slide up front. Because while Jesus did a fantastic job explaining over the two or three slides that he spoke to very well, up front to know where to direct my attention to filter the information coming to me would have been uh, very helpful as well. So again, thank you. Those are such uh, um, perceptive comments, Julie. And thank you, Julie. And we will turn all. to Rebecca. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I have some comments, um, but I wonder, Jose, your hand is up. Did you wanna say something? Yes, I'd like to. Uh, my name is Jose Luis Fernandez. Uh, sorry for not being able to, because of the technological problems at the beginning of the of the meeting. Um, I am the academic advisor of the team. Three of them are my 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 students, uh, Carolina, Olga, and Ophelia. And Jesus is, is not my student directly, but it's also in my university. My university is a uh, Comillas University, is a Jesuit one. I am uh, I am the director of the uh, Iberdrola Chair uh, in Economics and Business Ethics. Uh, curiously, Iberdrola is is in the same uh, industry that Andes Indesa, but it's different. Okay, um, I am very very happy uh, of my 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 students are here in this in this contest. Uh, it's our first time, but yeah. I promise you that won't be the last. <laughs> we will come back next year surely. Uh, if you need willing, something, if you need something from from Madrid, from from Comillas from Spain in general, even from Europe, uh, please ask me, I, I will try to, to do. Thank you. Jose, Professor, thank you for encouraging and motivating and supporting your students. Um, 
some of us have been academics and we know how important that is um, to developing this next generation. And obviously we knew that you were their advisor um, because of the gray hair um, and uh, you know, you're of our generation, um, but we're thrilled to have your team for the first time in the history of the competition. And we look forward um, to your participation um, for many years to come. It's for me for 18 years, I have seen some of the same teams from the beginning until this year. And that's very exciting to watch the development, um, not only of the concept of business ethics and of the cases and the complexity of the cases, but it's really, it's fun, honestly, to say to somebody, to an advisor, tell me about somebody from 10 years ago. How are they, what are they doing? How are they doing? Um, have they become compliance officers? You know, where are their careers? It really, it's very gratifying. And that's why some of us have been involved in this, um, in the competition for many, many years. Um, it's frankly a joy for us and we're thrilled that you have enjoyed it um, as well. And um, I wanna turn to Tim last but never least. Um, and his comments are always incredibly, incredibly on point. Oh, thank you. But I, Rebecca, did you want to deliver yours? We have more. Sure, thank you, Tim. Okay. Um, so okay. thank you uh, to all the presenters. I think that you were very professional. You spoke clearly. Um, and uh, I really appreciated that. Um, uh, uh, one, and, and so as far as the presentation, I agree that on some of the slides, there was a little too much text. And I was in the same situation of not knowing if I should read or listen. Um, so I would, I would encourage you to have less text on slides. And just as Murray said, less is more. Um, I think that would help your message. Um, as far as other presentation tips, you know, in this virtual world, we're getting used to being on video. And I would encourage, you know, I can see all of you pretty clearly, except you, Jesus, you're in a shadow. So I would encourage you to have some more light for your future presentation so we can see you clearly. Uh, the other thing is I appreciate that all of you have your backgrounds clear and not blurred. Uh, my, my re or what I've found is uh, the research shows that that shows you as more authentic when, you're re when your background is not blurred. So I would encourage you to continue that. Um, as far as the content, um, I would agree with a lot of the comments from my, my uh, co-judges. Uh, and one thing that, that, um, that I, I liked what Julie said as far as having that statement in the beginning, I was a little unclear as what exactly is the problem? We know COVID is a problem, but what exactly is the problem and what exactly is your solution? I wasn't sure if you know, did, did we found out that Indessa did have a teleworking policy, but it wasn't consistent. So you were looking to kind of update and make consistent a policy. So that just wasn't a hundred percent clear to me in the beginning. So I would focus on that that clarity. And that's all I have. Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. Thank you. We're going to take this with, uh, for tomorrow. Uh, and uh, so do you, Ruth, do you want me to jump in now? Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, I guess I'll, I'm the last person and the other judges have captured so many of the things that, uh, that I agree with. Um, I, I want to start with what uh, Ruth and Murray said, uh, well, everyone said, um, you get an A plus for your English. Um, uh, I agree with Ruth. I can't possibly imagine the concept of delivering something of this high quality for this many minutes in a language that uh, is second nature to me. So congratulations on the quality of your communication. Um, for the other judges who have known me for years, um, I'm the one judge who really cares about timing. And uh, I'm very impressed that you came in at exactly 25 minutes. Um, yeah, that was my so job, thank you. Yeah. That was my job, <laughs> well done. Yeah, that uh, it, it was. Uh, it, it's you get a hundred points anywhere between twenty five and thirty is is perfectly fine. And I I particularly dislike when people come in at twenty or nineteen or eighteen because that means they left out an opportunity to be more persuasive. So uh, you clearly practiced uh, to be able to come in so flawlessly uh, at twenty five. Um, sure, I really. Yeah enjoy the passion uh, that came through. It's so tempting when you practice these things and you want it to be just perfect to just flawlessly just read from a screen or something like that. I, I really, especially with Carolina, but really more than, more than just she, but 
um, I, I felt like she was genuinely interested. I mean, we're trained as judges to really believe that this is a real life situation and we really are the board of Endesa. And so uh, we would want a, a, a company like yours to be passionate about the subject. And so thank you for whether you did that on purpose or not, but it's great that it comes through that way. Uh, I'm impressed with leveraging the HBS uh, methodology. So uh, part of what Murray said, I agree with that. I, I wish there was an opportunity for you to have been more specific and to avoid it just being happy talk and airy fairy, as he said. But one positive thing you did to move away from being too general was by leveraging that HBS methodology that you rooted your point of view into something that has been researched uh, and that was impressive. Uh, also leveraging the EBIT, uh, um, as I agree with Ruth that I, I like when there's good finance information. I love if there would have been a slide that would help us understand what are the real cost implications of your recommendation, um, especially what Murray said, like the gap between you know where we are now and where you're suggesting we be. But on the other hand, uh, what you showed with the EBITDA was was very helpful and important to me. It it roots your point of view in in fact and rational logic as opposed to let's just make the world a better place, you know, sort of a thing. Um, I love how you, in each instance, you really did as the um, competition asks you to do, establish the key laws, the key finance information. Uh, you explain the four ethical theories in a practical way, so that was excellent. And the best part is you know, how Tom White recommends the rule of three. At the very end, you connected back your recommendation to what you said about finance, about law and ethics, and so that's great. So. That's all the positive stuff. Uh, the negative, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate that uh, Ophelia had to leave. I, I understand sometimes life happens, but you know, it's unfortunate. Um, uh, I felt uh, Jesus uh, was right there at the beginning, which was great, but when all is said and done at the very end, uh, I, I, I wondered if, if Jesus was, uh, had contributed enough to make it really feel like, you know, it was a, a full four person team. Um, uh, sadly, I get hooked up on little things sometimes. Uh, the, the slide that said discussion, which was multiple slides was misspelled, which is distracting to, uh, you know, board members of Impressa, uh, Indessa like me who, you know, had rough childhoods, you know, so we focus on things like that. Um, I agree with uh, what's been said. Uh, I understand why you have to put a lot of content on the slides, but I agree with Ruth that um, it, or maybe it was Julie who said it, that, you know, I don't, I don't know how to, what to do. I want to listen. I want to hear your passion. I want to hear what's important, but the content of the slide is so valuable and helpful that I'm tempted to read it, but I don't have the ability to do both. And so I don't, I don't know what you can do about it, but I think Murray's suggestion of, if you had to do this over again, it, you know, if there was, you know, more focused slides with sometimes, you know, less words uh, or something that would make it easier for the, the listener. Um, there were a couple of instances where uh, uh, you misunderstood the question. So that's disappointing. If it's a technology issue, there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, Murray had a great question about gap, uh, the gap that was just misunderstood. And, uh, and I didn't feel like my question about any opinions of unions about it was, uh, was answered uh, what I was looking for. So um, my last point is, uh, you know, those moments when you brought up very specific examples, um, you know, Maybe I just have a simple mind, but I love those things. I love when, and I would have loved like a, a slide or two of here, the top 10, you know, the reality of this thing, when you got down to the fact that it not only covers telephone bill and internet, but also electricity. And when you got to the point about the fact that, you know, it's be more than just parents because not every employee is a parent. I, I just love when you get into the, the hyper specifics of, of what, what how, how is telework changing and how is it different on a day-to-day -day 
basis for this group of employees. So overall, uh, congratulations, uh, immensely impressive. And um, I'm glad that I got to be a part of it. Yeah, thank you so much, Tim. I, I know that gap question and I, I view that as semantic and language um, more than more than anything, um, because the answer was not responsive to the question. But I think we have to recognize that this is either your second language or possibly your third or fourth. Um, and so I want to thank all of our um, our judges for dedicating and committing their time to this endeavor. Um, and I know how committed everybody is to the program and, and to the competition. I want to thank the team again for a job well done and a tremendous amount of um, effort. And thank you, Professor, for, um, for your involvement with them. We wish you a lot of good luck and we hope to see you in person in 2022 in Boston. Okay, so I think we can all um, exit and I will see you, Tim, in, uh, in 12 minutes. Thank, thank you, you all. Take care, everyone. Good everybody. luck. Yeah. Stay well thank and you. stay safe. Thank you.